In this video, we're talking what to expect this week and what we've got from the move meta up to this point. We're well within what should be the move meta. Is it really here? Has move completely taken over or is it non-existent still? Is Silk going to be a must buy and what OTAs are we expecting this week? So let's jump in. So we're going to look at two locations to talk move meta. We've got Marvel Snap Zone, and we've got untapped.gg. Both of these locations, I like to look at numbers a little bit to get an idea of where we're at. First, we're gonna start with Marvel Snap Zone. They just came out with an article where they listed the tiers. They've got three tier ones. They've got a number, what, five tier twos and a handful of tier threes. And just looking at this at the surface, tier, th tier one, is Evolved Lockjaw or Evolved Lockdown. So it's all about high Evo. The other tier one is Sarah Control, which has been up there forever. And we'll touch on that in the OTA. And then tier two, we've got Galactus, Good Cards Wave, Sarah Surfer, Bounce, Pure High Evo. And then let's just look at three tier three because we haven't talked any move decks at all yet. We got Stature, Discard Dracula, Destroy, Electro Ramp, Devil Darkhawk, Thanos Control, Shuri. Budget, Hand Size Destroy, Ongoing, Sandman, Kazoo Control. Not one mention, not one of move. So let's go to Untap GG where it's just raw numbers. We start with latest patch, Pool three plus, and we're just starting with 30 to 100. I like average cubes and win rate is that my focus. In A, they've got Sarah Control. B, High Evolutionary, Bounce, Patriot. I mean, in this High Evo, solid Sarah Control. No move cards there. Bounce, a great deck still, even with the beast changes. Patriot, I've seen a few of those, not so bad. Again, Sarah Surfer, Discard. Lockjaw, Galactus, on reveal. Okay, where's my move? Where is my move? I'm literally nothing. Am I missing it? Here we go, Ghost Spider in C. Okay, so here we've got a Ghost Spider move deck and they're showing average cubes here at 0.38 win rate 54.6% with a pretty high popularity, which isn't surprising right now. Nothing in the low game volume down here, hit Nebula. So win rate, they sort it by average cube. So looking at 54% win rate, well, I mean, is that decent up if you come here? No, these are all close to 60. These are all, I mean, the lowest one we got up here, Galactus at a 56, that's close to that one, but a little bit better cube rate. Same popularity. I, I'm not seeing, I mean, again, they got a couple here, she not. Let's let's change this just a little bit. Let's, let's shift this all the way up to 60 okay it changes is any move here we got we got our ghost spider again nothing it's still really low actually i think the cube rate went down all right let's let's pull let's pull back infinity let's see because sometimes people like to screw around up there they're just messing around all right anything where's my ghost spider oof oof drops to d you dropped a d on me ghost spider what are you doing what is this a bad deck i mean it's i mean i suppose you could change a couple things around in that for sure all right let's, let's get into the higher higher competitive range here a little bit again i'm i am not seeing it nothing 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 ghost spider moves up a little bit here with destroyer dropping down some and then you know at the tippy tippity tip top let's see sarah control still at the top scrolling 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 yeah not we're not didn't miss anything in b c did it make c nope but a whole bunch more dropped to d and ghost spider still really low down here i mean it's just it's pretty tragic here all right let's just change this just to 90 see if there's any players just in that range or maybe having some success doesn't look like it. No, it, it again, it drops even further. All right, let's check it just in the infinite. So we've got just Sarah at the top, high evolutionary. And then is there any move? We've got Patriot Lad, Stature, Lockjaw, Doom Wave, Control Galactus, Electro Ramp, Bounce, Cerebro 2, Discard, Darkhawk, Shuri, Destroy, Patriot, Hella, Thanos Control, Toxic, Negative, Thanos Death, Thanos Zoo, On Reveal. Ghost Spider has a negative literally a negative very popular but a negative so i'm assuming maybe this is a lot of this one looks slightly different i don't remember seeing the arrow on the last one there's a wave in this so slightly different here but not very good uh a thousand games that's a that's a decent chunk of games too so not not it's not doing very good it's just not so why isn't it in there well, one, the Marvel Snap Zone could be subjective a bit. They do rank those with some thought behind what they're doing versus the untapped.gg, which is pure numbers. Move is a hard deck to play, period. So you've got to be a really good player. And I think there are still some issues with move currently. I think Ghost Spider is really cool, but I think you need a tad more for move to really work. And I think that Silk is going to help. 2099, I think is going to help a little bit, but I think it is maybe going to fall short because you only can destroy one card. I know a lot of people were saying it was going to be OP if 2099 destroyed once at each location. Maybe, maybe not. I think the amount of cards you need to be able to get 2099 to pull off a destruction at each location 
would be a lot of investment and potentially worth the RNG chance to blow them up, but doesn't matter. We don't have it. So regardless, 2099 might help a little bit, but maybe not a lot. So I think the truth is, is that the move meta isn't really going to hit us until we get a card like Blink. Blink, you can move this each turn and when it moves it's a plus one power now this is not in game yet so we could change how much it costs and the power to start i will say that a three cost i was like oof, that's tough because you're really looking at maybe potentially drop dropping dr strange or maybe something along those lines or you could iron fist this card and maybe you iron fist and then do blink on turn three blink into craven wait you can't do that because craven costs two so then you can't play your iron fist but there's a lot of limitations on move but i think that blink is going to help a little bit in getting that craven built up a little bit where you can just ping back and forth quite a bit and it'd be and it's going to be huge once you get kung long and you go blink between craven and kung long bounce back and forth that gives you another card to work with the other one that I think that might help, Surter. But then you've got a combo Surter with Human Torch. Surter is going to, if you move Human Torch to this location, it gets plus 10 power. Now, is it going to stay that way? Who knows? But you, if you think about it, you could get a small Human Torch out there. And then Surter, you could play on five, easily get Human Torch in this and get a really strong left-hand side. And maybe you have Surter on the left, a bunch of cards on the right, and you lock down left and middle with your move. And maybe even play Heimdall on the right and get some solid stuff. The last move card I want to mention that could help a lot with the move meta is Yo-Yo. When this card moves, move it back with plus one power. It's a uh, one cost and two power. The only issue I see with this is, again, how are you going to be able to move this a lot? I'm not sure that you can. So depending what other cards they have here, I think this is another potential card that might be solid. All right, so given all of these different rankings for these decks that we looked at both of these sites for, this leads into our OTA talk. Of course, I've got a spreadsheet for ones that I've suggested in the past. I'm not going to go through all of these. I will say that I'm standing by my Red Skull buff that I think he needs to have that I mentioned a couple weeks ago. I'm still thinking about these three with the Dazzler, Spectrum, and Nick Fury. I'm not expecting them now, but I, I would like them to touch all three of those cards. But knowing what's going on with this, we know that the focus is probably going to be on Sarah and High Evolutionary is my guess. I think there's been enough time to look at both of those decks. And I hate saying that because I love High Evo. So the first one I would focus on is Sarah. I would change Sarah and this is gonna hurt, but to a 5-2. I think that she has dominated for so long that a change like that would still make people think, you know what, I still might play her at 5-2, which tells me you should probably lower it to that section. So nerf number one, Sarah 5-2. Now the next four are gonna be focused on high Evo. So Cyclops, he will ding your cards for negative one anytime you have unspent energy, and he does it twice. So it's minus one, minus one, if there's two cards. If there's only one, he only does it once. I think at three, four, Cyclops might be a little strong. So I'd start here by taking him down to a three, three. I think this still works, even if he's not in high Evo and he's in Patriot, I still think the three, three will be just fine. Next, we have Wasp, probably one of the most played cards in the entire game. I would not change her cost or her power, but in the high evolutionary set, if you can do this over an OTA, I would have her hit just one target instead of two. Hurts, but honestly, at zero cost, I think that's reasonable, especially when you're seeing her play in all those lockjaw decks over and over. Does that hurt your A-bomb? Yeah, it does. The next one I looked at was Thing, and I'm not picking on the ones that actually ding your opponents on purpose. It's just the ones that I thought made the most sense. But for this one, I don't think I'd change the cost or the power as well. I would change it from hitting your target three times to two. So instead of hitting either three different cards, you're basically only going to hit two cards or one card for minus two. This is the one I struggled with a little bit with High Evo. I think Hulk is arguably the strongest card in here, but I think if they change this to getting just plus one anytime you have unspent energy, it might take a lot out of the card and the pizzazz behind High Evolutionary. So I'm not ready to say that quite yet. But the thing I'm suggesting for Hulk within the High Evolutionary build is to cap it at 20. Do not let it go any stronger than 20. I think that's more than reasonable. It gets it at that infinite level. I might even say it's okay to cap it at 18. I know I said I wouldn't mention Galactus, but I had to. So I don't know if they can do this over OTA, but one of the things I want to throw out there is what if Galactus could not be played before turn five? He's only either able to play on turn five or on turn six. I think obviously Galactus on turn six is a totally wasted card. So getting him on turn five really is something you need to have in the game for Galactus. This takes away that Spider-Man play. So you're not going to be able to play Spider-Man with Galactus at all, which I think is one of the bigger frustrations, but it still gives you some of that Galactus lore of destroying all the other locations. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I know a lot of the Galactus players do like it. I'm not here to necessarily debate all of that. 
What I'm going to suggest is that I think maybe that's a good start for where to look at this card and see if there's much of an impact there. We'll see if they ever change them, but those are my suggestions this week. Last but not least, is Silk a must buy? So you can see we talked about earlier at a 2-5, very, very strong. After any card is played here, this moves to another location. So it's basically going to ping around the board. It's not going to gain any points from doing that unless it's given it those points by a location or something like that. Or if there's a card eventually introduced saying as a card moves here, give that card points, which would be a helpful thing for the move meta given some of the things we're going to talk about. I mean, we talked about blank. That's an additional points for blank and yo-yo and could be for silk. So you could ping things around the board in between Craven whatever this other card would be, you could give points to that card and then also be giving points to Craven as the card moves around. Another positive advantage with Silk is she's going to be moving so much that Miles is going to get procced very often. So he's a card that you definitely have to have in that deck because at one cost, big thumbs up. A quick answer for is Silk a must buy? No, nothing's a must buy. High Evolutionary, arguably, probably the first must buy we had in a long time. And the main part for that being a must buy is because it was a big bad and you knew it was never going to lower in price. Silk, I think, is going to be a strong card, but I would not be surprised if this eventually gets OTA'd to a 2-4. I think at a 2-5, and we're going to get into the location risks and benefits, but I think at 2-5, there's not a lot of risks here. So I would be a little weary if you're someone who's not got a lot of tokens and thinking about buying this going 2-5, that's great. It could very much change to a 2-4. We talked about Craven bouncing into Craven gives him obviously points, which would be great. But what about the locations? I said that there is a benefit and risk here. There's a lot of locations that having Silk can benefit you. And then there's also a lot of locations that having Silk will hurt you. Any hard to reach location like Altar of Death, Death's Domain, Sword of Danger Room, though there's a little less risk with playing into Danger Room, there's still that 25% chance your cards will get blown up. Silk won't get blown up. Anytime somebody floods a location, you can get Silk there. You can always get Silk to Kiln anytime after turn four, which is great. Luke's Bar is fantastic for Silk if you can get her in there. Morag, maybe. If you're not able to get a lot of cards played, maybe you can get her into Morag. Semi-beneficial. Kung Long, obviously gaining two points anytime she bounces there is fantastic. Quantum Realm, not too bad because she'll move in there and it won't reduce it to two. The Vault, in case you need to get something there in turn six, but that's a lot of RNG late in the game. And really the grand one is Sanctum Santorum. Anytime you can get her in there, that's always a big win. So that was about 11 good locations for her. What about the bad ones? Bar with no name. If she goes there, that's not good. Fist Tower, she's immediately destroyed. That is not good at all, unless you're playing some sort of death deck. Jotunheim, if she goes there, then she starts taking negative power. It means you've got to play another card there to get her off, which means more negative power. Definitely not good. She goes to Rickety. Somebody who's already got a card there and or plays a card there. Or wait, you play a card there. Does she move before it blows up? Hopefully she doesn't move there when there's already a card there. The Space Throne, she moves there. You've got a five card. Not terrible, but that's not going to probably win that location. And you can't play anything there unless you've got Jeff. She moves into Superflow. You stop getting energy. Definitely sad face. And then the last one I could see that is potentially down is Warrior Falls. She could be good there depending what's there, but can you imagine her going there and then you losing her? That would, again, not be great. So there's a slight advantage to the location benefits there at 11 versus the risks at, that are more at seven. So a little bit better. So to me, maybe that's good. So this card's really about the two, five power miles and Craven, mainly because the risk reward situation with the locations is almost equal. And with more locations coming in the game, you never know it could equal out. So for Silk, it's like I always say, unless you're a content creator, or a whale who's got a bunch of tokens already saved up and you've got to have everything right away. I would wait three to six days to see how everyone's feeling her play. If you're absolutely obsessed with her, I think it's not a bad purchase. Given the two to five ratio on her, she could stay in series five for a little bit. And then there is the risk of them eventually seeing like maybe that's a little bit too strong and getting it nerfed. And then we're going to have the whole conversation about they always nerf cards before they drop them. When in reality, this card might be being released a little bit too strong. So that's my thoughts. That's what I think is going to happen this let me know what your thoughts are on Silk. Are you going to buy her? What your thoughts are on any OTA changes you're expecting this week? And the move meta. Is it here? Is it not here? Did I miss something? Or do we just need some more cards? Or do we just need to get good? What is it? Appreciate you making it this far. If you want to help support the channel or this video, please consider hammering down that like button, sharing with your aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, neighbors. Always appreciate that. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.